Okay, this first video. Okay, this video is going to give you an overview of what a cladogram is. At the top, it says, "What is a cladogram?" So that is, it, a, it is a diagram that depicts evolutionary relationships among groups of organisms. And you can read through that whole introduction. And basically, it says that a cladogram is not only going to show you organisms and how they branched off, how they're related, but it's also going to show you the traits that derived along the way or the traits that evolved along the way. When I look at this cladogram here, I need to realize that at the bottom of the cladogram would be the common ancestor to all of these organisms, or in this case, insects. My first trait here that is represented by the point A, this trait they would all have in common. Versus B, this organism would not have trait B because this organism evolved off this branch of organisms before trait B evolved or was derived. Okay, same thing with trait C. This organism here would have trait B because it branches off after trait B evolved but before trait C, so it, not, it would not have trait C. Okay, so with that in mind, I want you to match up these characteristics over here where, where they might be on this cladogram. Okay, I'll get you started and then hopefully you can finish the rest. So for example, if I'm looking at all these organisms, the trait that all of them have in common, if I look at my options here, I'm hoping that you can pick out that they all have some form of a segmented body. Next, trait B, it's going to be a trait that this worm does not have, but all the rest of the organisms have. Okay, so what trait does the worm not have, but all the rest of the organisms have? That would be legs. Now trait C, I need to find something that this organism doesn't have, but all of the rest of the organisms that have branching off after trait C, what do they have? All the rest of them have in common the fact that they have six legs. The spider beforehand had eight legs. Okay, I'm going to keep going up with these three traits. I'm going to go ahead and do F, G, and H, and then I'll go back to these two. Okay, so F, trait F, these two organisms would not have that trait. However, the three organisms in the cladogram that appear after trait F derived would have that trait. And hopefully you have already marked down, F should be wings. Okay, finishing up the rest, think about what trait do both of these organisms have. That would be trait G. And then finally trait F, only this organism at the end of the cladogram, the one furthest away from the ancestor, would have that trait and along with all the other traits that have come along the way. Okay, trait G, I'm hoping you have already marked it. Trait G should be double set of wings. And trait H, curly antenna. Okay, going back to the last two traits here, we have jumping legs and crushing mouth parts. This is a very simplified example, so this one should be pretty easy to figure out. We have crushing mouth parts, trait F, and jumping legs, specifically trait, trait E. So the organisms that are here on this branch, they have traits A, B, C, and E if I'm going up to that organism, and D if I'm going up to that insect. Okay, so that's the front on the cladogram. This is a very simplified version of a cladogram, but this just introduces you to the idea of this type of diagram. I'm going to flip over to the back. And on the back, you're going to create your own cladogram. Okay, I'm going to help you set it up and then you'll have to finish it on your own. First of all, when you have organisms that you're trying to put on a cladogram, you need to think about what trait do they all have in common. Then start thinking about the traits that only some of them have in common and work your way down so that you're hopefully finding traits that in the end only one of them has that distinguishes them from the other organisms. Okay, looking at the chart, and once again, this is a very simplified example. But if I'm thinking about the organisms, a slug, catfish, frog, tiger, and human, then hopefully you are marking down that they all are made up of cells. So think about think about where those would evolve, where those would be placed on your cladogram if it's a trait that all of them have in common. Okay, then looking at the next trait, backbone. Think about catfish, frog, tiger, and human. Hopefully you know that those have the backbone in common, but not the slug. 
working way my, my way through the chart. Frog, tiger, and human all have legs. Only the tiger and human has the trait of hair. And then, of course, only a human has an opposable thumb. Okay, a thumb that opposes the other fingers and can be used to grasp things like tools. Okay, so to make my cladogram, I'm going to help you set it up and then you'll have to finish it. I'm going to follow the general pattern of the one on the front. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line with my ancestor, common ancestor being at the bottom. Let me put that in your field of view. And then I want you to go ahead and do, let's see, we have five organisms in, that we're going to put on our cladogram here. Think about what organism you might put down here versus up here. You're going to fill this on your own. And then I want you to think about what trait, let's put the traits here, what trait do they all have versus a trait that then derived, then the next trait that appeared fourth trait that appeared, and then finally the last trait that appeared. Okay, so what I want you to do now is I want you to put the traits from the chart in the order that they appeared to there, and then the organisms that they appeared to there. Okay, once again, this is a very, very simple cladogram in real life. It's not this simple to pour organisms on a, a chart that shows evolutionary relationships, but this is the general idea of how a cladogram works. Okay, now your job now is to finish your cladogram.